it's Lisa. I'm continuing on trying to work through my stash this summer and I'm on thickers this month. Uh, trying to use up some of the little bits and pieces of various sets of thickers. One of the things that I never seem to use are the numbers. And so that's what I'm going to work with today. And I have pulled out lots of different green ones. Like this set has almost no alphas left in it, but it does still have a few numbers and there's probably some numbers, and this is one of those that did not stick very well. Um, but I think I've gotten my most of my worth out of it. I'd just like to get a little bit more. What I'm going to do with those is use them um, as part of the background on this page. I have this gorgeous paper from Studio Calico that I've been saving for a special page. And when I went looking for something that would go with green and go with my photo, this paper really jumped out at me. It's the only piece I bought from the Wanderlust collection. I, Studio Calico is one of those companies where I think they make beautiful things. I just have trouble using them. So I bought this one piece of paper. We're going to use it for, it, it'll sort of look like the background, but there's actually going to be something underneath it. Um, I'm inspired by a card from Sharon. I hope I'm spelling, I'm pronouncing her name right. Sharon Brandon. And I'll put her name and I'll put a link in the description to her card where she did a, um, a birthday card where she put a number and then put something underneath the number. I'm going to cut my number out and I'm going to put thickers underneath it. So I'm going to bravely take this paper over to the silhouette and I'm going to cut something out of it. It's the only piece I've got of it so I got one shot to get what I want uh, out of this uh, paper. So let's go to the silhouette now and I'll show you what I'm going to be uh, doing with it. So in the Silhouette Studio software I'm actually going to start by drawing the rectangle that represents the photo. I'm not going to actually cut this. I just need something done as a placeholder so I'll know how much room uh, to save for my um, numbers. So you can use the software kind of as a drawing tool. So there's a 4 by 6 and I'm going to add my numbers using the text tool. Just go ahead and put in 50. And I want to pick some sort of block type of font and experiment with a couple of different ones here. The one I end up using is Bernard MT Condensed. Um, it's one of my favorite fonts for this kind of thing. I think it just looks nice. I mean, it's just really a matter of preference. You just want something that has f the area for the numbers themselves is fairly large so that they'll show up well or that the uh, stuff underneath will show up well kind of getting it in the size and position that I want it on the paper. Since I'm going to be cutting this right out of the background. Now my 4x6 there, I'm going to be matting that so it's going to need a little bit more space than what it shows. Kind of getting everything just the right position. And one of the things I did actually do after I, you've finished seeing this portion and before I cut it is I did move it over to the left just a little bit more than what you're seeing here on this just so I'd have a tad more space. Now I also want to put in a circle down here that I am going to cut out because I'm going to put a flower or some kind of design uh, below the photo and I thought it would look nice to have some of the background showing there as well. So I did about a two and a half inch circle and that's one of those, you know, if I don't cut it big enough, I can always cut it larger or cover it up or something. But the 50, i got to be pretty happy with. <laughs> All right, I've got that ready, and I'm going to move the um, rectangle off the screen so that it will not cut. And we'll send this to the cutter. And here we are back with it cut out. And I'll save that middle of the 50. I'm going to need that. Now underneath the, the 50, I'm going to be, I am going to be putting a pocket over there on the right, but underneath the 50, I've got some grid paper that's in a light uh, blue-green color that I thought I'd use to put my numbers on. Um, it's just happened to match well. It's just something I had a scrap of. I don't want to have to cover all of it, though, so I'm marking kind of where the thickers are going to need to end up going just as a starting point for laying them out. And I'm not going to glue them as I put them down because you know most of these things are not going to stick really well. I am starting with the larger ones and I'm also avoiding the foam ones to begin with because the foam ones do stick. <laughs> I've learned the hard way that, uh, that the foam ones 
pretty much stay put when you when you put them down. But I'm starting with some of the chipboard ones. These are not American Craft stickers that I'm using right now. I think they're making memories, but they're the, you know the same kind of thing, the chipboard uh, stickers. I'm just picking a lot of numbers. For the most part, I'm staying away from the zeros because I can use the O's as O's uh, with the rest of the letters. So especially on a set where I still have a lot of letters left. Now this one, you know, whatever. I can use any of the numbers here because I just don't have much left there. And you can see the word making sticking on top of that. That was some foam that I put in the wrong place one time and it stuck. Okay, kind of getting an idea again how much uh, room we have. And I know, realized that I needed more space for or I needed a border around my numbers. So what I'm going to do here is using my numbers, I've, I've gone back to the silhouette and I'm going to use the offset, internal offset option to add a little border on the inside of these numbers. So I'm going to select them and go over to internal offset and it will create this little tiny line around them and you can barely see it, but it's just too small. And you can adjust the amount of space. Um, I'm doing about 1.25, 1.22 uh, for my internal offset. And what that does is it gives me about an eighth of an inch border around the inside of the letters. And I'm going to cut this out of some cardstock and put it underneath uh, the letters. Now one thing when you've got multiple lines like this, sometimes it's nice to change the colors of them so you're sure you cut the right thing. So I, I want to select these and I'm going to change the color of the lines, just it doesn't matter what, just one, one set of the lines to blue. So that way I'll be able to, to tell which is the outside lines and which are the inside lines and click and drag the correct one off of the screen for cutting. I'm also going to be positioning these in the upper left hand corner of the uh, mat because that's where my, my, I had positioned my paper that I'm cutting because I'm not cutting a whole sheet just enough to do uh, this border. So now we're back with this little narrow border and out of this gray paper, it's an old color called Going Gray from um, Stamping Up. I seem to be using a lot of old stuff here. And that is just the perfect edge to, to help those numbers stand out more. Because if I had cut the top layer out of a less busy paper, I don't think I would have needed to do this. But with that really busy paper, it, they just the numbers just were not showing up. The, the big numbers were not showing up, uh, the, the 50 there. So I needed something to, to help it stand out a little bit. And I'm gluing a few things together so I can get these numbers in here permanently. And I'm going to move them around. I still haven't added the foam ones yet. I'm about to do that. And I want to know for sure where my, um, my others are going before I add the foam ones. As I say, once you put those down, they kind of stay put. So I'm just tightening everything up here. And I'm pushing the numbers as close together as possible. And that's what I've done. And I've added a few foam ones in between and seeing where I have some gaps, I need to maybe move a few things around. And it'll soon be time to glue down anything that didn't stick really well. Some of them stuck pretty good. Uh, just a little extra pressing will hold them in place. But there are others that definitely need some glue. And I'll glue them on with Tombow adhesive. And I ended up using a couple of O's here because that's what and just sort of filled in the gaps the best. Now with all these stickers, I need something to put all this on. So I took a piece of thin old designer paper to lay these on, just making sure I've got everything lined up the way I want it. And I'm going to use something else as a placeholder because I've got all those stickers underneath the numbers but nothing around the rest of the page. So I've got some old chipboard, 12 by 12 chipboard that I have used most of the images out of. This was I think originally from Oriental Trading and I'm just cutting it up and I know it looks kind of ugly here but it's just going to be a spacer. I'm going to glue that between the two layers of paper. I also have a round 
uh, one that I had saved and I put that down around the circle that will give it a good foundation. I'm going to have to add a little bit more down there in the lower left hand corner. And just gluing these three layers together, the background paper, the chipboard, and then the designer paper on top. And it'll be a pretty sturdy page and it surprisingly doesn't end up being that heavy. You would think it would be, but it, it's not really very heavy when I get it done. And so I've used up a bunch of thickers, I've used up some old chipboard that would have just been trash, um, some papers I hadn't worked with in a really long time, um, plus a little new paper there, that top sheet from Studio Calico. When I did the journaling for this, I actually went back to my own journals to see what I had written about my upcoming birthday, and surprisingly I hadn't written that much. I'd thought about it a lot, but I hadn't journaled about it very much, but I did put a few impressions into some journaling that I'm going to hide underneath the photo. Sorry about my head there, I normally cut that part out, but I'm just gluing that uh, piece in the middle, and I had to be able to see exactly where it went to line it up with the... Uh, the rest of the paper. Okay, now we're getting about ready for our pocket. I'm going to use a mat for my photo and make that the pocket and I take the distressing tool. This was a tool I got from Stamping Up. I think Tim Holtz sells one of these. And just going around the edge to give it a little bit of texture to kind of go with that old wood look from the background paper. And normally I glue these on with uh, strips of tape, of adhesive, but I just, I didn't really have enough room. And I reprinted my journaling and I didn't make it quite narrow enough. So I used Tombow adhesive and it worked okay. You'll see later on where I have to add a little bit more glue uh, to hold it in place. Now the flower. I went looking for what I had and I had this flower I had cut when I first got the silhouette except it's pink and I don't want it to be pink so I I found some glaze I had to go to my Faber-Castell glaze because I just I didn't think the glossy accents was going to use so much of it I decided to use the Faber-Castell glaze and I'm mixing it with a little bit of orange um, ink from a Stamping Up reinker. this was I think Dusty Durango which is a, really a rust color and it didn't turn out that dark but it is pretty orange I don't think it's showing up quite as orange in this video as what it was in real life but I'm just giving this a coat because I want my flower to be real glazed. That sort of goes with the metal pen that I had on in, on the sweater. The pen was, was green, but I'm, I'm using the orange because it's one of the colors in the background paper. I'll give it a little contrast here. And normally I would just let that dry, but I've I kind of picked it up and moved it out of the way so it wouldn't stick too bad. Um, I did find though that it was awfully orange so before I've kind of left it alone I added another color of ink this was I think Sahara sand which is a taupe color to kind of tone down that orange and went back over I started in the middle to see what it would look like since I knew the middle would get covered up and I liked that so I just went ahead and covered the whole thing and that toned it down really well and so once this is dry it's, or it's just almost dry here I mean, it's just the slightest bit tacky um, I'm using a crochet hook, the end of one, the the end you hold, not the, the hook end, to uh, turn to sort of curl the edges. And this turned out to be so pretty. I was really tickled with this flower. And the middle was also cut on the silhouette. It was just something I cut as an experiment, and I had it laying around here. And I thought, well, I'll just use that up. Just played with some brads and stuff here, and I finally ended up with a. Um, a brand, I can't remember what brand that is. I think I got it at Hobby Lobby, I just can't remember what it is. But um, anyway, just a pretty fabric covered brad to go on the middle. Alright, and I ha did put my journaling in the pocket. I'm going to do a little more with that later on. I do think I'd like to have some ribbon going across. Just playing with a bunch of different ones. 
my challenge was finding something wide enough. I had one that was really, really wide there, this, this striped one, but it was just a bit too much there. And that green is a great width, but it is both of those greens, but one's too frou-frou, and the other one is, um, that's a kiwi color that just didn't really match. So the best color, I think this was some Stampin' Up! Certainly Celery ribbon. I really like it. I just feel like it needs a little more width. So I went to my washi tape to see if I could add some more layers here. And the phone rang. And now we're back. And I'm continuing to go through the washi tape. Fortunately, I have a paper there to helps me get my washi tapes straight, since <laughs> I never can get them straight. Now, up at the top, I had originally pulled out this bag of stuff that, just extra stuff where I had like one of something left. I was going to use a flower out of it, and I didn't like the flower, but I did like that little paper clip. Uh, not paper clip, clothespin. So I am going to work with that on my tag, and I'm trying to do this without pulling it completely out because the journaling is kind of private. Um, it doesn't work so hot, but what I'm using is the Stamping Up, oh, I can't remember what this punch is called. It's an old punch. It just punches two holes, essentially, in the top to do a ribbon, and you take the ribbon through the front, and you cross over the ends, and you bring it back through the other side, which you can do with any old kind of punch. You don't really have to have a special punch for that, but it, it is kind of a neat one. I think I'll add a brad. I need something to keep it from being quite so centered because the flower's right underneath it down on the bottom. And I kept moving that clothespin around and it ended up at the bottom of the page is where I decided to put the clothespin. This is our completed page. And what I thought I would like the best about this page would be the numbers. And I do like how the numbers came out, especially after adding this offset. Um, but what I really like about it the best is the flower. <laughs> I'm really, really tickled with that flower, so I'm definitely going to have to do that again. I added a little more glue here, so now this can come in and out, and um, the back doesn't pop up like it's um, not meant to. But you get some nice dimension with the layout, and all that... Um, chipboard, it adds a little bit of weight to it, but it's not an especially heavy page, really. Some close-ups on some of this. Okay. So thanks for joining me today. Um, I didn't create a sketch ahead of time for this uh, page, but I do have a little more about the, the the page over on my blog if you'd like to see that. And of course, there are links to from there to other products that I have, other classes and things that are going on. And be sure and check out the rest of the Thickers videos uh, this month. Thanks.